I'm thinking in my head right now, how did we get from this? Political power is not going to be served in a restaurant. It knows how it's a la carte. At all costs, fight for it. Grab it. Snatch it. I run with you. To this. We will not allow coup after coup. West Africa separate. What would the coup plotters actually be thinking right now? What will be going through their minds when they hear Tinubu make these statements? I'm sure some will be like, ah, Oga Tinubu, Alpha. Now we winner, just be say you wear Agbada and we wear Kakio. Now the same principle, power is not served a la carte. You must grab it, snatch it, and run with it. I bet you don't forget. Now on a serious note, coup is bad. Whether it is civilian coup or a military coup, coup is bad and must be discouraged. Another thing that Tinubu actually said that also baffled me is this. We must bite back. We can't sit like toothless bulldog and everyone. We, we work collectively to pursue inclusive economic integration of West Africa. We should serve a warning to exploiters that our people have suffered enough. We will commit to democracy and promote democracy and rule of law. I am with you. In Nigeria, we are back. Three things came at me from this statement. Number one, a commitment to rule of law and democracy. And then number two, He's talking about standing up to the exploiters of West African nations, including Nigeria. And then he's talking about Nigeria, we are back. I don't understand. Where did Nigeria go before? So we are back from where? Is it not the same APC that we have had? Tinubu says he will stand up to the exploiters of African nations, including Nigeria which means that he's planning to stand up to the IMF and the World Bank. That's what the meaning of the statement is. But what do we find? You see, I say that Tinubu says the opposite of what he does, and this statement is testament to that, to this fact. In Nigeria, we have had a couple of policies that have been enacted by Tinubu. Number one is devaluation of our Naira. That is not standing up to the exploiters of Nigeria. Number two is increase in the pump price of petrol in the name of subsidy removal. Even though subsidy in Nigeria is a fraud, if the subsidy were even to be there in the first place, removing the subsidy is a wrong policy because the West subsidizes even the oil corporations that they have. Because many people are quick to point to the fact that it is private companies that run oil exploration and refining in America and in the West. But what they fail to realize is that the oil companies, the shells of this world, Chevron, the ExxonMobil, the Ajib, all of them, they are subsidized by their different countries. They are subsidized in the America. They are subsidized in the EU. It's called subsidizing productions. Those private companies, they are subsidized. So even if the subsidy were to be there in the first place in Nigeria, which it is not because it's a fraud perpetrated by a few people to steal the collective resources of a whole country. If the subsidy were to be there, the removal is not a good policy because the West are doing the same. But he gave them that. He gave them subsidy removal. And that's just playing to the West. That's not standing up to the West. And there's privatization. That's not standing up to the West, the IMF or the World Bank. You have policies like the $800 million loan from the World Bank meant for palliatives. We all know what the World Bank, the IMF, do with loans. And the World Bank is giving us $800 million loans as palliative. What are we supposed to do with that? Add on top of that, there's another $155 million loan for electricity meters. We all know what they do. And then you're collecting these loans, loans that we actually don't need. Because if we needed $800 million loan, by the time you gather Dangote, gather Otedola, gather who else again? Tinubu, Atiku, 
and you ask them to bring five five hundred million dollars out of their net worth as donations or contribution or even soft loan with no interest by the time you ask them to give us this loan we already have over one billion dollars so why do we need to go to world bank and indebt ourselves to them why if not that we are selling our country into slavery on a platter to this west that Tinubu is claiming that he, we must stand up to them he says one thing with his mouth and he does another thing he is opening the border for importation of used cars to nigeria he's removing the tariffs on used cars subsidizing consumption and killing local production in nigeria how is that standing up to the west this statement he's making is just a rhetoric and then he talks about the rule of law and commitment to democracy we must bite back we can't sit like toothless bulldog and therefore we we work collectively to pursue inclusive economic integration of West Africa. We should serve a warning to exploiters that our people have suffered enough. We will commit to democracy and promote democracy and rule of law. I am with you. In Nigeria, we are back. I hope he knows that the verdict of the tribunal if it goes against him must be obeyed as commitment to the rule of law i hope he knows that because commitment to the rule of law does not necessarily mean you going to other countries to force them to do the, your bidding and by the way i thought that he's sounding so autocratic we will not allow we will not encourage will be a better word the word of a democrat we will not allow sounds to be like the words of an authoritarian an autocrat that's what it seems to me so i hope he realizes that commitment to democracy means that when the supreme court gives its ruling and sacks him that he is bound to obey and bow out i hope he realizes that if he realizes that good for all good for nigeria good for west africa because really we cannot allow coups in any part of West Africa, whether they are civilian coups or military coups. But to end it up, congratulations to Nigeria. Imagine as the head of the ECOWAS Authority of heads of state and heads of government. Congratulations to all. And Tinubu being our representatives there for now, congratulations to you too. But note that we're taking you up on your word, commitment to democracy and to the rule of law with our eyes on the judiciary.